Thank you, and acknowledging that we are on Sodana, and acknowledging that so many of you are gathered here and are watching on the live stream. Um, I am so fortunate to be here. Derek and I, earlier before most of you have gotten here, Derek and I gave each other a hug and just like, oh, we did it! <laughs> Because I wouldn't be here if they had not told me the things I needed to know to be here. And I want to thank the divine, who is my conscience, who is my mentor, who is the one that I can't do this if I do not have the divine walking on the side of my head. So, some of you or most of you may know that the work that I do is to defend Mother Earth through dismantling the patriarchy. <laughs> that is the general gist of my platform. <laughs> so you see, when you, when you say the word patriarchy, people automatically assume that you're a man-hater. This is not true. I can assure you, I'm not, I'm not a man-hater. Some of my friends are male, I can't possibly be a man-hater. <laughs> Taught me, what my gurus taught me, 
was that in order to dismantle oppression, you must be a spiritual activist. I work to defend Mother Earth by dismantling the patriarchy. Because that is the root cause of all of her pain. And that means that while creating external solutions, as when we worked on Zero Out platform, and as when we fought Shell's Arctic drilling grid, and as we supported um, the fight against the Kingdom Morgan pipeline with indigenous peoples who were on their land defending their water, as we were at Standing Rock, as we are in solidarity with Black Lives Matter, as we are in solidarity with trans rights, as we are in solidarity with immigrant rights, and we want to open the borders, right? We also simultaneously must do internal healing. Because you cannot fix a spiritual problem without fixing the way we are broken spiritually inside. So we must heal. We must heal. And that is why I do both of those things. And the link between external solutions and internal healing is community. The link between both of those things is community. We must heal together. We must resist together. We must build together. That is what I do. That is the work that I do. It's not easy to sum it up in one line as a soundbite. You have to understand what the real root causes are in order to understand why these are priorities. And it's not easy. Right? It's not easy. It means we must sacrifice. It means we have to do the internal work. What does that mean? That means we have to examine our own privileges. That means we have to be willing to confront our own internalized oppression. We have to confront the ways in which we've internalized sexism, internalized racism, we've internalized settler colonial mentality, even if we ourselves are people of color or native people. We've internalized that white entitlement that male entitlement, that cis entitlement. We've internalized all of these things. That speciesism, where we think, oh, it's okay if, you know, um, if the animals are dying out, as long as the humans live. Or uh, there's the other extreme where you have the mainstream white climate movement saying, but what about the polar bears? But they don't care about the native people who also live in the Arctic. So we have to have both, right? Because the native people care about the polar bears, but no one's listening to them. Right? So where do we take our leadership from? In dismantling our patriarchy, we have to also learn to, uh, to listen to those who are marginalized, because when we do so, we are learning how to step back. We are learning how to not listen to our ego, and instead listen to our heart. Right? Listen to our heart. And that's the work, and it's not easy. For example, I, as a brown woman in this country, you would say that as a brown woman, I'm extremely marginalized, this is true. I also have Global North privilege, because my sisters in India, no one listens to them. No one listens to them, no one cares about them. So as someone in the Global North, it is my righteous spiritual duty to speak up so that what they are suffering is heard. So that someone knows, someone hears, and someone shows up to do something about it. I also have cis privilege. I have straight privilege. That means that my queer and trans siblings, it is my responsibility to show up for them, to speak up for them. When no one mentions their struggles, it is my responsibility to bring that into the conversation. The, exactly the same way I say to white people, and to cis men, it is your responsibility to bring up the struggles of people of color, of native people, of women, of non-male people. I, I, I tell them that, but I can't tell them that if I am not myself doing those things for the people who I should be showing up as an ally for. So in understanding my privilege, I have to understand I have the same privilege. That means that other people of color who are darker than me are not necessarily going to be listened to. They're not necessarily being um, going to be the ones who are given the mic. 
That means I have to look for ways to ensure that they get given a mic, that someone is listening to them, that someone is uplifting them, that someone is supporting them. That's why in For The People, we deeply care about creating a space that is geared towards uplifting marginalized people. Marginalized grassroots organizers who are already doing the work. That's why we care about it. And that's why we take accountability so seriously. Because we can't be saying to politicians and CEOs and all of these people who are destroying our planet, you have to be accountable if we are not ourselves being accountable. If we are not being accountable to each other, to our communities, to our people, to our elders, to our children, if we're not being accountable, if we are not being honest, if we are not acknowledging the ways in which we make mistakes, we will, we will be the problem, just as much as the people in power are the problem. So in For the People, we have taken it extremely uh, seriously, and we have written a policy on accountability, and I'm gonna read some to you. Because in writing this policy, and in making it a priority, one of the things that we want to do is we want to shift the culture in the social justice movement. We want to shift the culture away from this sexist, patriarchal, racist culture that is the mainstream towards accountability towards, towards marginalized communities. So for the people began, when community supported organizers came together to call out the organization they were affiliated with for harmful instances of rape culture and racism. That organization refused to be accountable. We laid out an entire plan. We did the work to give them a step-by-step -step plan of these are the things that you must do to be accountable, to listen, and to heal this terrible harm and violence that that has happened, not just now, but over years. They refused. And not only did they refuse, but they cut off our means of fundraising for our budgets. That meant that not only were they trying to silence us, not only did they not want to heal from the violence that they had committed, but they wanted to stop us from doing this work. That's how all the people was born. Because we who were doing that work saw that they were not going to listen to us and they were not going to, going to uplift this work. So we came together to say we need to create a safe space for that to happen. And that is what all the people is all about. And that's why we care about accountability so much because we've witnessed in real time, not just then, but so many other times previously in this entire movement when those in power have refused to be accountable. Because we're all going to make mistakes. It's normal to make mistakes. To make mistakes isn't necessarily wrong, but it is wrong to not listen and be accountable when we make mistakes. So with our understanding, we pledge these things. To listen with compassion to call-ins and call-outs offered by our FTPOs, board, contributors, and our communities. To consider ways we can make amends for any wrongdoing we might commit and take time appropriate action to make amends. To learn from call ins, call outs, and general critiques so we do not continue to make the same mistakes. To believe and prioritize survivors. To create a safe space for our community and each other. To look for and implement transformative justice practices to carefully consider the role of historical trauma, systems of oppression, and the dynamics of race and gender when dealing with conflict, to recognize the unequal inputs of labor of women, queer, trans, and non-binary people in comparison to cis men, and to try to prevent such unequal labor distribution, to protect each other from attacks from patriarchal and racist power structures, to learn about internalized oppression and its role in causing harm, to continuously deepen our analysis of systems of oppression, to recognize and dismantle our own fragility and privilege, to push each other to be more authentic, to work beyond equality towards equity, to make reparations 
with an aim towards reconciliation without demanding forgiveness, to be vigilant to gaslighting, to ask for help, and to take time off. So yeah, we're gonna smash the picture.